Hey Life Mission family, it's so good to be with you for Daybreak Devo this morning. I've got the birds joining me out here on the porch and um, you know it's been an amazing week um, as we see and continue to pray and lean into what Jesus is doing in the earth and uh, what he's wanting to do. And I just love what we when we get to celebrate the gospel and on Sunday night, you know, there were lots of us that gathered um, at, by the fountain, by the Johnson County Courthouse, and we lined up on Santa Fe, and we just stood as a wall of prayer, praying for our city, praying for our nation, and we're gonna do that again on Thursday night at seven at that same place, but when I was just standing there and I was just interceding on behalf of our city, on behalf of so much that's going on, but, but more than that, on the individual, each person that God so values and so loves, and it overwhelms my heart um, that, that we get to realize who he's made us to be as ministers of reconciliation. Um, once us were far off, we were lost, we were dead in our trespasses and sin, but through Christ we have been made alive. And um, you know, you think about something really as simple and it's not a great illustration, but I was just thinking if you bought tickets to like, let's say you bought tickets to the Super Bowl and then uh, you wanted your friend to come with you and then they weren't able to go, they weren't able to get off work or you weren't able to go or you bought tickets for a concert but you weren't able to go. Just that feeling of, oh man, we paid for those, you know, those cost us. And um, to contemplate, I know this isn't a good comparison again, but just to contemplate of the price that Jesus paid. It says that he demonstrated his love for us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for me, he died for you, he died for your neighbor, he died for everybody you see in this world. And um, that nobody is outside of hope, nobody is outside of his love, nobody is outside of his compassion and his ability to reach. You know, I read um, in Second Peter 3, uh, verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness. And this is talking in Jesus, he's going to come back. For us, He said when he ascended to the Father after he had died and rose again, he said, I go away that I'm going to come back um, and that you would be with me, right? And it says, the Lord is not slow about his promise as some count slowness, but he is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Because you're like, wow, Jesus, why don't you just come back? Like, why is all this havoc? It's like, he's not slow. He is patient. And, and we get to join him in that and see through his lens of his value. Like he paid this price. He doesn't want anybody to not be restored and reconciled into relationship with his father. He made the way for us. He paid the debt we could never pay. And we have to carry that within us and then give that to others, that message of hope, that message of the gospel, that truth that he doesn't want any that none would perish, none, none, but that all would come to repentance is what the scripture says. So we know his will is that none would perish, but all would come to repentance. Um, it says in Romans 5.18, I just think it's so amazing to think about, okay? And it says, I'm going to read it in New, New Living Translation. It says, yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone. We live in a fallen world. It says, but Christ's one act of righteousness him dying on the cross, standing in our place, taking the blame and sin. But Christ, one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. And I just wanted to encourage you today as you're praying and as you're um, doing life, as you go through your day, that whoever you look at, uh, whatever you're seeing, seeing on the news, seeing in your workplace, seeing in your home, to know the love of Christ that compels us, right? That um, he, he wishes that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. Um, this past week, I've been meditating on a scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, um, 18 to 19, because I think sometimes we as believers have to zoom back and remember, okay, we have um, the kingdom of God, and then we have an enemy, a very real enemy that the Bible says only comes to still kill and destroy. But Jesus came that we would have life. So every time we see things in this world where there's killing and stealing and destroying, we know who is behind it. The enemy comes only 
to steal, kill, and destroy. He is a deceiver and he is a liar. But Jesus came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. So as we look um, to that and as we wish that nobody, we along with Jesus, that none would perish but all would come. That's why our prayers are so important because the Bible says the enemy has blinded the minds of unbelievers that they cannot see. God. And we pray that those blinders would come off, that the kindness of God would lead them to repentance, that his heart of love and compassion would be revealed to others through us who have been saved also by grace, not of ourself, but it's a gift of God. But we've received that gift and we in turn want to share that gift with others because Jesus paid this price. He bought this ticket, but more than a ticket, he restored relationship. And so we want everyone to know his love. Um, it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 19, I'm going to read it in the Amplified. But all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation so that by our example, we might bring others to him. That is that Christ, that God in, was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them. Did you hear that? Not counting people's sins against them, but canceling them as he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. That is restoration of favor with God. And so he doesn't count those things against. And Jesus is so laid on my heart the past it's been two or three weeks, him just continuing to say to me, whenever my heart chooses to be offended or to be hurt or to be uh, looking through a lens of my lens, he has said, no, Mary, I took the blame for everyone. And so my heart's desire is that everyone would receive salvation and allow me to heal hearts. And so we stand in prayer and we're going to do that as I close. But I just want to encourage you uh, that we don't have to point a finger of blame. We don't have to walk in guilt and shame, but we get to walk free, free in his salvation, free in his redemption, free and fully reconciled to God. And then from that life that we get to live, we then also are hoping and praying and encouraging and loving others to be reconciled to God um, in letting them know that Jesus paid the debt Jesus made the way, and he is the way, actually, the truth and the life. So, Jesus, we just join with you today, and we just stand in the gap, and we thank you for salvation. We thank you that there's not salvation in any other name for anyone to be saved but in the name of Jesus. We recognize that, and we rejoice, God. We take joy in our salvation that it's nothing we could earn, but it's what you paid for. You paid the price. You paid with your blood, Jesus, and we thank you for that. And so we just pray for all that's going on in our world. Father, we just see so much division, yet you call us your own, that you wish that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. So we thank you for salvation, and we just bind a spirit of judgment, division, and accusation, and we loose the spirit of grace of love, of peace, and of reconciliation. We lose a spirit of repentance that would wake people up, Lord, that blinders would come off of eyes, that they would see that we are not in battle against each other, but there is only one devil, and that he comes to still kill and destroy, but Jesus, you came that we would have life. And so we pray salvation for our loved ones. We pray for salvation for our neighbors. We pray salvation in our cities, in our, in our um, nation, God, we pray salvation over our leaders politically, um, in the police, God. We pray salvation over the riots. Um, Lord, I thank you for what you're wanting to do. There's such an awakening going on, a shaking going on. And we ask that hearts would be awakened, that blinders would be taken off, that people would see that you paid the whole price for them to be reconciled to relationship with God. 
Lord, I thank you that we were never meant to walk outside of relationship with you. I thank you that you made a way for us to be restored, that we get to walk with you in our days. I pray that we would see through the lens of salvation today and we would pray with the, with the understanding that you wish that none would perish, but all would come to repentance. All would be reconciled to relationship with the Father. We thank you, Father, for who you are in Jesus' name. Have a great day. I hope you're encouraged. Um, love you guys, and we are praying for you every day.